beaches in New Zealand were absolutely beautiful. It's 15 years ago now, and I'm just starting to make a film about that. But what I want to work on this time on the small 2430 canvas, um, which it seems small to me now because I've been working on the larger ones, might be quite large to some of you, um, is this rather nice scene of the footprints going away into the distance. It's been digitised. I was going to do it as a great big one with the knives, but I decided actually to go smaller and just use the sponge rollers and brushes again. Um, and enjoy uh, just making a smaller moody piece about the beauty of just walking alone on a beach like this. Well I'm going to make a start on this lovely one of the beach now, the walk, and uh, beautiful colours there ready laid out and a 24-30 canvas ready here to go on. So I'll treat it very loosely and I'll go ahead again with a small roller and a uh, large brush for mixing. I'll start with the sky, work my way down, mid-tones first, then through to the deeper ones and finishing up with the lighter ones gradually building up on the top. Quite the opposite to watercolour, remember, we'll be starting with lights going to darks, here we're starting with our mid-tones, then down to darks, and then working our way up. I'm um, going to start, as I say, with the roller, work nearly all of my colours in with that, finish off with the brushes. It seems strange working on a smaller size again, I must admit, it's uh, what you see used to working on the great big ones now, which I'm going to be doing next, so I've got a great big one I want to do, and um, the water going on the roller. Uh, on uh, uh, this uh, Hebridean scene, with a rather lovely cottage mist, which I want to really work on heavily with the knives again. But it'd be nice to go back just to a smaller work. So I'll start with some um, turquoise and cerulean blue then. A bit of that beautiful turquoise on my brush. Mix that in here. And to start that off, um, as it is pure, just to get the roller going. And then add some uh, Cerulean into that turquoise. So here, I've just marked off the basic shapes really with the, with the clouds and things as you can see. There's beautiful deep turquoise going on around here. Now I don't want the paint too thin. Um, it's one of these troubles with using acrylics as they do tend to be very transparent and a bit thin. But I do need to get a good layer of this on. Through into there. You can just see the pencil showing through the paint when it's like this, when it's semi-transparent like this, which is rather nice. A deeper cerulean now. I'm going to start bringing the colour right around that. And I'm going to uh, blend one colour over another gradually here. Very cheerful painting, this lovely New Zealand light over here. Deep rich, and I'm going to bring some cerulean across that in a moment and just give it a sort of glaze of it. So just working up my, my mid tones. Often you find that with, um, I think the horizon on the landscape especially tends to be about uh, the mid tones of the painting quite often. So I can put layer across layer using this technique with the rod. Mm -hmm. It seems quite dark at the moment, but these pictures always do at first because we've got white canvas. Right, so I'm going back to this much lighter greeny turquoise that I had earlier. I'm just going across that now. You see it's going slightly darker as I blend it in. I want a very, very light cerulean, so I'm taking the cerulean I had with the white. I haven't had to clean the roller yet, you'll notice, uh, because I'm using very similar light colours. You just blend that through it and uh, it works quite well. A little bit of that cerulean against this yellow now. Yeah. Now I need this sort of grey colour that's going here, um, this one here, so I'm going to take a little bit of light purple, add it to that. Got all sorts of lovely colours going on up there. It's, uh, a bit of yellow. It's very, sometimes it's quite hard You've got to look into these colours to really see what mixes them. What mixtures I require to try and get these various greys. Let's just have a look at that now. Let's see if we get anywhere near. Yeah, it's got some of that colour in there. There's a sort of blending of purples and, and yellow greys going on these lovely soft effects. I'm going to put my lighter colours over here in just a moment. Remember this 
just to get rid of the light really at the moment and put the seawood for trees. Again we can just drag these colours one across another. Get the feeling of it now. Deeper still, so the same mauve. Get a little touch of alizarin this time. Some lovely colours in here. And a little touch of uh, orange. Just to see if that brings it down a bit. Get right there. They're very strange colours, not easy to make. That's not far off now. You can see that colour on there. Let's try some of that. A little bit more orange into there. Could have used um, yellow ochre, but I'm using this one a minute. Let's see if that's not too dark. And we'll see if we can get that to work here. Yeah, that's the sort of colour I'm after, look. So it was light purple and a little bit of orange into that. Strangely enough, strange colours you wouldn't really always think of mixing, eh? That's one of the beauties of playing with the um, computer on these sorts of things because they, they give you totally new colours to try, not only to try here, but once you've, once you've remembered this, I kind of made that colour that way, then when you're actually out there in the landscape painting on plein air, you can see some of these colours yourself. Lovely colours, aren't they? You see, you'd never think of mixing these together if you were out there normally, or I wouldn't anyway, I know that, I know you guys would. Um, so this is where the computer enhancement and playing around with colours like this, it helps you to, forces you to look for other colours. Blue-grey. Blue -gray. I mean, grey isn't just black and white, I had somebody the other day, one of my more mature students too, who should have known better. Oh, you ever make grey with a black and white then, Pete? No. We're going to make our greys with colours, usually uh, tertiary and secondary. So brown and blue and white will give you beautiful greys. Uh, but in this case we're using warms and the cools to make the grey. More colours than you might think going on. You can see it happening now. Look as I show you the picture against it possibly. Although this will look darker than this. We'll come back with some blues into that in a minute as well. A bit lighter still and I think uh, a lighter yellow. So take the same colour and uh, a bit of the lemon yellow again and some white and bring that a much much lighter a wee touch of white into that just to go for my last for a bit of some darker colours, I want some slightly deeper colours yet here but a little bit of light just coming through there and here light just shining through here. And I need to make some of these slightly deeper mauves going on in here. Let's have a play with that next. I'll take it directly as it is, I think, there first of all. It's rather lovely blue purple, light purple. Because it'll be a little bit wet the roll it, we'll have a little go with it and see. Bring those purples in over the top here, just glazing in. I want to just glaze it across the surface in places too. So when you've got the colour on your brush <coughs> or your roller and it's somewhere else, then by all means use it there. Make a bit more form underneath these clouds. Brush out a moment, just a bit clogged up. Some days I'm going to have to use a brush, I know, but not right now. Right, very, very dark, purple, green. There we go. Now let's whack in some of the beach, shall we? That's always nice, warm, yellowy <coughs> uh, greys here now. Let's start with this purpley grey. Again, we'll take some of the light purple. A bit of yellow ochre this time into that. See what I can get. That's too warm at the moment. It's too much cooler, so I'll take some cerulean blue, add that to it. It's coming down to the colour I want now, a little pink into it, a bit warmer. I'm getting that warm grey now that I was after. You can see 
possibly see here. Let's close a look. Still not quite there yet. A little bit of lemon yellow into it. Maybe a tad greener. It looks to be about right. Test it. Yes, yeah, so I'm not far off with that. We'll get a, a roller and go for that. Use the roller vertically as well as horizontally because I want to get the feeling of wet sand coming down here soon. Forward fraction onto that. And go right round here. Oh, it's got a bit darker with that. We'll take some more purple to there, a bit more to tan of orange into that. It's one thing to see colour, it's another thing to see enough of it to actually mix as well. I'm going to come off the edge of the canvas here. Must lose these bits of white, I don't want them at all. I hate them. Pop them up white. Alright, now I want to mix this yellowy colour here. So we'll start with the white, just because I'm going to need plenty of it. Let myself go in, it's going to be a bit wet in a minute. I'll take some yellow ochre and a bit of chrome, deep chrome yellow, and a fairly yellowy, slight like greeny tint to it. So I'm talking about greeny tint, I'll add some green to it. We're getting there now, down to the yellow ochre again. It's still a bit too light at the moment. I'll kill it down a bit, take a bit of burnt sienna. Too much, but ah, oh. back to the yellow again, the green again. We're getting there now. Hopefully, a little test of that in just a moment. More green, not far out there. Maybe a fraction more green into that. Surprising how many colours there are in something. What's better? Right, run the roller through that. Happen with something, change it. Get that lighter grey again here, quite differently. Right, on we go then to mix more colours. Let's get this blue grey of the sea going here, I think. I need some colour in there, so now is as good a time as any to do that. A little bit of white and turquoise into there. Let's get a basic. Basic effects. Now let's work up this strange greeny pink that I had there earlier on. So I'm still not happy with. Right, I want to start working with the brush a bit more now. I've got the basics done with uh, the roller to see there's some colours here that I want to bring up a bit stronger with. If it works. It's amazing how you can just mix a colour and put it on. The brush like that and find that something's gone totally deep shit on you. Rub that in and I've got totally the wrong colour. Just blending these colours in. So the rollers aren't the be and end all, they're just another tool to be used in our armoury tools. This cerulean blue that's starting to work into this here. My brush to get the various effects over this. Put out these subtle differences in the blues and greens. And then I've got to start working the darks up before I put those lights back in again. Before I do that, let's just look at some of these lovely deep. Blues and darks happening down to here. So, lovely ultramarine happening down. What's this here? To play against these up here because these are much, much warmer blues. And we've got 
got some lovely deep turquoise screens going on here as well, back in the background, back here. I just love all these different, this is one of the reasons I like the US and pastels is because they have such a beautiful range of turquoises as well. The bits of green there that's so important. One or two colours can make such a difference to a painting like this. They're so subtle that so. Uh... Right, smaller brush now. I've taken the number zero fill but now, which means I can do thin lines as well as little dots and dashes. And I just want to work up just a little bit of these of these darker colours. And you think the colours are dark before, until I suddenly start putting in some real darks like this, and you think, oh, maybe they weren't so dark before. And it makes such a huge difference to the painting. And this is the fun. We've got rid of the underpainting, and we can start to uh, play with all these little footprints and marks and things in the beach as it comes along here towards us, which are going to lead the eye in. The deep green as well, I remember. Talking of those footsteps here. Yeah. Lead the eye back there. It's that very deep purple. We'll add some of that in here, make it darker still. Don't want to dot the eyes across the T's too soon, but we're we'll able to just do a bit of this now. Are you enjoying this? I oh, know, it's uh, lovely colours and this is the stage, as I say, when I come to it that I really do start to enjoy things like this. Right, let's line things up and just come to the much lighter colours I really want to pick up on. I'm going to start with a little very, very light pink and along these waves here. Right, now I can go to my white and a little touch of yellow. Tiniest bit of cream then in other words. And a little bit of cream from the sky. Doesn't show too well but I want to look at the different colours lighter colours make. Let's bring them into here as well, make them sparkle here. Don't make it seem too artificial, but be careful. How much more do we need is the question, because actually I'm pretty far now with this. Sometimes the brush picks up something, I don't know where from. Quite work that there. It's a little drawing now, I just realised. In fact, this uh, mountain actually. Just have to fiddle around with this bit back here until I'm happy with it. And it gets it's lost there somewhere. Usually my drawing is better than that and that just uh, does not work. It's ruining everything because it is a central point here and unless I get that right it's just not going to work. There we go, that's better. It's not always where you think it is, sometimes it's somewhere next to it you see that's not quite right. Almost there with this particular piece of work. I'm not too much further with it. Let's put a little bit of cool, very, very cool uh, light blue back behind the surf there. A little bit of ice. A little bit of that uh, turquoise from the. A few vertical strokes to get the feeling of reflection a bit more here. A little trip to the train, but. See the difference when I do it. Let's not overdo it, we'll start tickling it too much and lose the effect altogether if not careful. Now one or two marks can make such a difference that it's important we do them just at this stage. Now, I'm just going to put a couple of bits of pure white, absolutely pure white, just on the edge here, just to see if I can get that little bit more sparkle on the Bit of the waves here. Just 
bring out those other cameras. See the difference that makes. So again, when you think you might have finished, go back there, double check. There we are then. We can do that. Lovely peaceful evening scene as we walk down the beach. I just want to sign that very finely. I'll oh, just finish it off with a bit of dots and dashes here and there just to try and balance it up and the signature and uh, I think we're there for this one. Well there we go then. That'll do for this one. Roller and brush again. You can see the techniques that have been used here now. Let's look a bit closer. Right down to the footprints here. Which look like we've got light on the edge of them. Back up into the distance there and the turquoise into the sky. And those different light colours that we used at the edges for the surf as well, down to the light at the edge of the sand. And, and there we are, the final piece.